can't try to outraise the race. Can't do it. You can try to outspend the race. You just can't try to outraise the race. You can't go bullpen game. Come on, Yanks. You're better than that. 248 million to 75. Just outspend them and try to squish them. You try to outraise the race. You play with the bull, you get the horns. You know what I mean there? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Jason Fitz, Spain and Fitz, 7 to 9 on 97.3 ESPN Radio. So much to dive into today as we uh, got all sorts of issues in the NFL, possibly. Or they might have to shut some things down. Who knows? We hope everything goes off. We got the NBA Finals, got the baseball playoffs, college football, another big weekend here. Let's bring in Jason Fitz as he joins us now, like all guests on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Jay Fitz, how are you, pal? Man, what you just said is so true, and I can't believe being lost in this. I mean, if you're the Yankees, you know what you do well. Just go do what you do well. Like, just go knock the snot out of the ball continuously. Do what you do well. But you're absolutely right. You can't outraise the Rays, and I'm not sure exactly what they were doing. I still think that, you know, they should be on paper good enough to win this matchup, but it just it does not feel good for Yankees right yeah, now. Yeah, I said, like, this is like what I used to say, like, when the Rockets did with the, I was like, you can't out-Warriors the Warriors. Stop, like, trying to make more three-pointers in them. You got to beat them in another way. You can't just out-Warriors the Warriors. Now the Yankees are like, oh, you're going to go a bullpen game? I'll go a bullpen game. Let's try. It's like, what are you doing? Just, like, do work with what you got here, man. I don't understand it, but I'll tell you, uh, that series is very intriguing. The teams don't like each other. You got a 1-1 series. That one of all of them seems to be sticking out. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And partially because, look, the Yankees were so on fire when they were actually healthy, and then it fell apart. Now they get healthy again. So we all figure, okay, they're going to wake right up. It just it isn't that easy, and it feels like, you know, you mentioned the NBA side of it. How often do we talk in the playoffs about, like, sometimes the better team is still a bad matchup for somebody? It feels like kind of what the, the Yankees have drawn here. It just doesn't feel like a matchup that favors them, especially when you start talking about the pitching side of it. So, you know, I feel actually like it's the hardest series to predict because of that. Now, baseball is normally on at this time going up against football, but with the NBA Finals in the mix, do you think that it still has a reasonable amount of appreciation or do you think it's slipping under the radar? I mean, specifically this series, I do think it has a lot of noise surrounding it, and it's kind of weird thinking, look, the NBA Finals on top of the NFL is on around the same time. It's just weird to think about. No, you're totally right. But here's the I mean, I was sitting with a couple of buddies on Sunday. We were socially distant in the house watching the Raiders' Bills game, and we were laughing about the fact that at one point we'd spent a, a largely half an hour having only a discussion about the Yankees series. And I laughed. I was like, man, who would have ever thought that baseball would be resonating over everything else? I feel like what's happened in this shortened season is exactly what baseball hoped for. They get big storylines in the playoffs. And, frankly, it feels like a lot of people the NBA Finals are a, a given. We know who's going to win. So it, it doesn't seem to have the same level of just common fan really interested in it unless Jimmy Butler goes off again. So, you know, I, I think baseball is actually catching up some ground here, and it's been little under-talked about that the NBA ratings haven't been what people hope. Uh, I was just about to follow up. If you're the NBA and the ratings have been not very good, is that a concern with the big picture? I mean, I get it. You're up against Sunday night football. You're up against baseball. You're on in the time of the year where people just aren't thinking basketball. So are you concerned uh, if you're basketball thinking, hmm, we got some problems, or is this more a circumstance of 2020 and you're playing your finals in October? Well, I mean, I'm going to let it be a little bit of both. One thing that you know, I think also has to factor in, and you can look back, historically on this anytime there's an election year people switch over to watch more news than sports so now you have an election year that a lot of people are very interested in on top of the sports climate that we're in where there's more options than ever so i think you add all of that up and it's it's part of the issue but man the nba should be absolutely concerned because this isn't just any team this is the dang lakers with lebron and it doesn't seem like casual fans care at all and you've got the lebron versus the heat angle like I would think that people would care. They don't. So if I'm the NBA, I am very concerned about the fact that I can't make any excuses like, oh, it's the Lakers. It's, there's no LeBron or Lakers they did last year for Canadian finals. How different is it, though, if they're played in Miami and he's there and been playing? I mean, I heard Jay Will, who, by the way, will be joining us at 3.30 today. He said he did that. You know, they're doing the pregame and there's just no energy for the finals. I mean, like, it's got to be. And, like, as a fan – We were talking about this the other day. Game four of the finals has the same aesthetic look as the play-in games did when they first started here. Now, that's a really good point. And 
Jay Will's right about one thing. Like you're right when you think about the 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 firepower that would come celebrity wise with the Lakers and the Heat being back and forth between L A and Miami, and you start thinking about like what the the interest of that is just to see the celebrities that are out in it every single day. Like that is a real point that there's a, a different magic to it. But you know, I I still think at some point, you know, while I can excuse some of that. When you start talking about historic low numbers, I mean, I think that that's anytime you say the words historic low and you're talking about a series that has the Lakers in it, I'm puckered up if I'm the NBA. Yeah, that's a good point. I was going to bring something up similar to the whole atmosphere side of things. Like me personally, when I'm watching these games, you definitely lose a little bit of it. And I'm watching anyway. No fans is better than the alternative, which is no sports at all. But I just feel like there's probably so many people out there who just kind of like what Gil said. If it reminds you of when Ben Simmons was playing out there in that eight regular season game window, and this is now game four of the NBA finals, like the biggest moment in sports history in, in terms of, you know, that specific year, it's like, eh, it looks the same. That has to play a role with people tuning it out. Yeah, you're probably right about that. And and in fairness, I mean, when you start looking at the NFL and the numbers in the NFL have been very up and down, but when you start thinking about the NFL side of it, their broadcast does a really good job of hiding no fans. Like, because you're getting that pumped in crowd noise, if you're watching a game casually, there are times that you feel like it's a normal Sunday. And I don't know that the NBA can ever accomplish that with the way that by default they have to broadcast it. So it certainly has to play into part of it. I mean, atmosphere is part of why we love sports, right? So, you know, not having anybody to, to stand up and go, oh, my God, every time somebody gets posterized in an NBA game is significant, you know, and, it, and it's significant in the level of interest. Sure is. Uh, it, it is funny how uh, the um, the feel that you get when you watch some of these games kind of directs the way you go. I mean, the football, you can't really tell. Let's get into that, though. Jason Fitz with us from Spain and Fitz. You can hear him on 97.3 ESPN 7 to 9 weeknights and. Are you concerned about football in the state of already having a game moved, got more outbreaks, the possibility of more games this weekend? It was all right when the buys weren't here, but is football staring down the possibility of having some chaos happening? Yeah, and I think that they're going to have to come out and tell us what the plan is because, you know, as I've said repeatedly, I thought Roger Goodell should have given pre-programmed bye weeks once a month, once every eight weeks, whatever where there's no football at all to give themselves some wiggle room. They chose not to do that, but they did expand the rosters. So what I'm struggling with is you expand the rosters because you say that that's going to help you when you have COVID outbreaks. But every time we see a single positive test, it feels like a game gets shifted around. So how are they going to have their cake and eat it on this too? And I just don't think there's a simple explanation. And the Titans being where they are, I mean, guys, this is like, uh, to me, I don't, I don't know why we're not all looking at this yelling about it. I mean, there's a chance that the Titans could end up because of the way the schedule is going, somehow not having to even play the Steelers and the Bills, two of their toughest matchups that they're going to have this season. They'll be judged in a division against a team like the Colts that won't have that luxury, may have to play those difficult teams. All of a sudden, what are you going to do when you've got a 10-2 and two Titans team that got lucky on some of the games missing and they're being judged against, let's say, an 11-5 and five Colts team? It won more games but has a lower winning percentage. So now all of a sudden the Titans win the division. Like, that's a real possibility in this NFL season. And that is going to absolutely tick fans off. Yeah, that's going to be something. That's for sure. But I just keep telling myself, if baseball, the worst-ran organization ever, if baseball can figure this out, don't you feel the NFL can? Well, yes, and they did for a little while. But now – I mean, what have we seen in the last couple of days? Like, there are reports that, you know, I know ESPN, last I read, ESPN hasn't verified, but there's reports that the NFL is investigating whether or not the Titans decided to get together outside of the facility when they were told not to, to continue working out. And, like, you want to sit there in tremendous level of commitment to getting better. But then you look at it and say, guys, what are you doing? And you got everybody knows my Raiders fandom. I'm watching a head coach that's costing his team half a million dollars in fines because he just can't seem to figure out how to keep a dang mask on his face. And then they got players going to charity events that are not wearing masks because that's what's being accepted in that locker room. So, like, I have to look at it and say, how did everybody already not learn from Major League Baseball and figure out, hey, if we want to make it through this season, we have no choice but to make four months of tremendous personal sacrifice. Uh, He's Jason Fitz. Um, Jay, do we see another NBA Finals game after game five? Yeah, I, you know what? The only reason I say yes to this is because when we first talked about the finals, I told you all, like, 
I feel like Miami is just, they are a Tasmanian devil. Jimmy Butler is a Tasmanian devil. And he's going to out-effort the Lakers, who, while I think the Lakers are going to win the championship this year, obviously, I think we should at some point, when the dust settles on that, look back at this Lakers team and ask ourselves how it's possible that the NBA champions could mail it in so many times in the playoffs. Not even the bubble. Just the number of games where either AD or LeBron has just felt like maybe they're not that into it is, is really stunning for a team that's so good they're going to win the championship anyway. I think that should be a defining part of how we remember their championship is that, man, they could get out-efforted, and I don't remember the last time we said that. I think Miami will do that and get one more win out of it. Uh, it's been interesting. It's been uh, definitely different, but uh, we look forward to that. And, of course, Jason Fitz, like all guests, appeared via the boardwalk Honda Hotline. We will catch up with him. We might have an NBA champion by the next time we do. Football season, college games, a lot going on. Woo, we got the Masters coming up, too, in about a month. All right, Jay Fitz, appreciate it. Man. Hey, you guys have a great day. Say hey to Jay Will for me. He's the best.